It is now time for oral questions. I recognize the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you. Thank you very much, Speaker. My uh, first question is for the Premier. The Premier's secret plot to interfere in municipal elections is the act of a bully, not a leader. Yep. He never campaigned on it, Speaker. He never consulted anyone on it. And now he has no mandate whatsoever to inflict his own will on the people of Toronto, Niagara, Peel, York, and Muskoka, with the most anti-democratic action that this province has seen in years. When did he decide to be a bully instead of a premier speaker? Oh. <laughs> Ask the premier to take a seat. Um, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to caution the House. Uh, on the use of language. Um, we, we have to inter ensure that the Speaker can maintain decorum in this House, and inflammatory language makes it uh, much more difficult in order to do that. Um, so I would caution members on their language. Premier, response. Well, through you, Mr. Speaker. Leader of the Opposition, I crisscrossed this province and campaigned on accountability, trust, reducing the size and cost of government. Yeah. Unlike the Leader of the Opposition, I fought for the people of this great city for years to reduce the size and cost of government. When I talked to thousands of people at the City of Toronto, not one single person came up to me and said, Doug, I want more politicians. <laughs> they want less politicians. They want that money to go to priorities that matter to them. They want to make sure the $25 million that are saved are going to go to infrastructure, transit, that's a gridlock. It's gridlock just like that city hall's been gridlock for decades. Thank you. Stop the clock. Please take your seat. Start the clock. Supplementary. The Premier cooked up his backroom plot to steal power from the people and kept it hidden from 14 million Ontarians for the entire election campaign. There was no consultation and no fair process, and that means that today there's absolutely no legitimate mandate for this Premier to cancel regional elections and rip up Toronto's wards. Why is this Premier inflicting his will on millions of voters when he never told them the truth about what he was going to do? I'm going to ask the Leader of the Opposition to withdraw. Withdraw, Speaker. Response. Premier. I, spot, I talked to tens of thousands of people across this province. I talked to thousands of people in Toronto, and every single person I spoke to in Toronto said City Hall is dysfunctional. It's not getting transit. It has not even put a shovel in the ground for transit over 20 years. Housing's backlogged by a billion dollars. Infrastructure is crumbling right underneath our feet. We're going to reallocate that money to things that matter and priorities to the people. We don't believe in bigger government. We don't believe in more politicians, more bureaucracy. We're going to make sure the City of Toronto finally runs more efficiently. My friend. Final supplementary. Premier's secret plot, cooked up in a back room and hidden from the people of Ontario for the entire election campaign, doesn't just fit the very definition of a hidden agenda, it's also petty and mean spirited, and it's a vendetta of a man who doesn't want to lead speaker. Instead, he wants to bully his way through. He wants to get his own way and exact revenge on his old political opponents. Yep. Why is this Premier abusing his power, abusing his power, and showing such contempt for the people of Ontario? Response. Through you, Mr. Speaker, 
The difference between myself and the Leader of the Opposition, she wants the, the Leader of the Opposition wants to talk about bullying. I'll tell you the definition of bullying when it comes to the Leader of the Opposition. Cutting 7,000 jobs, laying 7,000 jobs at the Pickering Power Station. They'd still be looking how to put food on their table. It was up to you. We're reducing council by 25 politicians, 22 politicians, should be 25, 22 politicians that people love the idea. Yeah. Out of anything I've ever done in politics, I've never had a better response yeah. than I've had about reducing the size and cost of government. My friends, even my neighbour. Take your seat. Take, take your seat. The Premier will take his seat. Stop the clock. The House will come to order. Thank you. Next question, Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Speaker. My next question is for the uh, <clears throat> Premier. The Premier's plot to undermine Toronto City Council and stop elections in Peel, York, Niagara and Muskoka is an assault to our democracy. It robs people of their voice. It robs the people of Toronto of their right to decide how many councillors they elect. And it shows that the Premier is not interested in doing what's right for Ontario. He's driven by his own desire for power. Why is this Premier trying to control Toronto City Hall from the Premier's office? Mr. Speaker, in the City of Toronto, we have 25 MPs, we have 25 MPPs, and some of those ridings are larger than Prince Edward Island, they're larger than some provinces that your MPPs and my MPPs have to cover. I can assure you, when we have 25 councillors, it's going to be 500,000 less sheets of paper. I'm protecting the environment. I'm protecting trees. Is this going to be less bureaucracy? It's going to make the mayor's job easier. It's going to make fellow councillors' jobs easier. It's, it's going to make the clerk's job a lot easier. Because right now, with 47 people, it would be dysfunctional. Spons. Nothing gets done at City Hall. There's gridlock on our streets, and there's gridlock at City Hall. Nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Stop the clock. Take your seat, please. Restart the clock. Supplementary. The number of councillors that Toronto needs to serve the people of this city is a decision that belongs to the people of this city. Speaker. But, but this premier doesn't care. All he cares about is inflicting his will uh, and his own whims on the people of this city. Why is this premier trying to rig local elections, Speaker, just to put more power in his own hands? Mr. Speaker, the Leader of Opposition wouldn't know what it is to serve the people of Toronto because you've never done it. You've never went out there. You've never talked to the people of Toronto. Let's do a little, let's do a little comparison here. We have Los Angeles at 4 million people. We're about half the size, and we have 47 councillors. Mr. Speaker, when I went to Los Angeles, and I told the people we had 44 councillors. They said, how can you get anything done? Yeah. My answer is, we never got anything done. No one gets anything done because there's too many politicians, too little, too many fiefdoms down there in the interest of themselves. 
and I'm glad my neighbour, Councillor Prutz, is here, because we had many conversations, and every Fox. other councillor, all 44, have agreed City Hall is dysfunctional. Here, here. Nothing is happening by spending. Stop the clock. Members, so please take your seats. Restart the clock. Final supplementary. <laughs> Interfering in the middle of local elections to steal power away from the voters is not an act. It is an abuse of the house. I don't need any help. Thank you. I have to ask the member to withdraw. What? Withdraw. In the middle of local elections, to take power away from the voters is not an uh, act of leadership, Speaker. It is an abuse of power. Taking revenge on political opponent, opponents does not show strength. It is a deeply chilling sign of weakness and insecurity. And hiding one's secret plans during an entire election campaign does not show respect for voters. It demonstrates utter contempt for the people of Ontario. Why is this Question. Premier acting like a dictator? <laughs> Premier? Oh, boy. <laughs> Just go ahead, sir. Mr. Speaker, Leader of the Opposition, you go to the people. Maybe we should go out to the people in the streets, door knock, and ask what they want. Do they want 25 more politicians that they weren't consulted with, or do they want less politicians? Do they want more police, or do they want 800 less police than when I was there to protect the streets? Do they want more transit, or do they want less transit? Do they want higher taxes or lower taxes? Because we know you want higher taxes. You want big government. You want a dysfunctional government. We're going to reduce the size and cost of government. We're going to save the taxpayers $25 million. And we're going to get things going for once and for all with transit. We will get this city moving again. Up the clock. We can restart the clock. Next question, Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Speaker. The uh, questions uh, to the Premier, who just indicated that this really is all about him. Uh, let's not forget, this Premier could not get elected as Mayor of Toronto. He was soundly defeated by the people of this great city. And in June, the vast majority of Torontonians once again rejected this Premier. But instead of accepting Toronto's verdict, this Premier is trying to settle political scores with the people of this city. Why is the Premier trying to punish the people of Toronto? Well, Mr. Speaker, granted, I only ended up with 330,000 votes when I ran for mayor when five weeks. That's more than all the NDPs combined in the city of Toronto. And I think we did a pretty good job in the last provincial election. It's like throwing boulders in a glass house. Leader of the opposition, people want less government, they want lower taxes. We aren't going to be laying 7,000 people off like, I, like you were going to up in Pickering. Yep. We're going to create jobs. Yep. We're going to create transit. We're going to fix the infrastructure, and we're going to take care of the billion dollars backlogged of housing. People are sleeping on the streets because too much money is going to politicians, not into the taxpayers. Thank you. Restart the clock. Supplementary. Well, I would dare say that most Ontarians and most Canadians want democracy, not dictatorship. <laughs> democracy. The 
once again, I, I'm going to caution the House and the members who are asking questions today on the use of inflammatory language. We have to ensure that this debate continues in a respectful and civil manner to the greatest extent possible, as we all expect and, and hope we could achieve today. Leader of the Opposition. Speaker, the Premier's decision to behave in this way instead of acting like a leader is the most revealing thing that he has done yet. By keeping his plot secret for the entire election campaign, he has shown that his word is, in fact, worthless. He has revealed that he will steal power away from the people he disagrees with, and he will abuse his own office just yeah. So I'm going to ask the Leader of the Opposition to withdraw. Withdraw. And he will abuse his own office to take mean-spirited revenge on his political opponents. Why does this premier have no idea how to act like a premier? Premier. Leader, speaker, through you, leader of the opposition, you won't ever have to worry about acting like a leader. Yeah. You will never have to worry about that. Because <laughs> Democracy took place on June the 7th yep. yeah, yeah. when the city of Toronto, the region of the greater Toronto area, the rest of the province decided they want smaller government, they want less taxes, they want lower hydro rates, they want accountability for the first time they've seen in the legend God knows how long. Yep. Leader of the Opposition, you're going to have a chance to vote on this. All the power to you. The people voted on June the 7th to make sure we start respecting the taxpayers, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Here, here. Before I call for the next question, I would remind all members that you make your remarks through the chair. Next question, the member for York Centre. My question is to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Minister, what a wonderful weekend in Toronto. As a resident of North Toronto, I'm excited. I am, ex I am excited about our government's plan to enable Toronto to save on costs, streamline decision making, and ensure equal representation for all Toronto residents on City Council. Can the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing tell us how the government is helping Toronto with the upcoming municipal election? Thank you, uh, Speaker, and I want to thank the, uh, the member for the question. Uh, local governments deliver critical services to residents. It's in everyone's interest, Speaker, that they are efficient and respect taxpayers' dollars. Absolutely. Speaker, we believe that the taxpayer in Toronto will benefit from the changes that are proposed in the bill. I understand that the municipal election period is already underway. Voting day is just uh, three months away. And that's why, Speaker, my ministry intends to work with the city to mitigate operational issues under this proposed legislation. To allow candidates to develop uh, revised plans, Speaker, we're going to be sitting down with the, the clerk's office. We're going to be extending the nomination period for those councillor and school board uh, candidates to September 14th. I can tell the member more in the South that we're working with the city on this issue. Members, will please take your seat. Restart the clock. Supplementary. Speaker, thank you. Back to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Thank you very much, Minister. It's great to hear that you have Toronto's needs in mind, and I'm more optimistic than ever. Yeah, I'm more optimistic than ever about the future of the city. Will the minister go back and ask uh, Ontario's chief electoral officer to share the most recent voters list with the city clerk? Minister. Thank you, Speaker. And again, I want to thank the member. I I'm, I'm very glad uh, that you asked this question. Uh, as I said, uh, I believe that uh, the taxpayer of Toronto uh, will benefit from the proposed changes in this bill as soon as possible. And that's why we've, uh, we've already had conversations with Ontario's chief electoral officer, Greg Asenza. Should the City of Toronto require or request some assistance, the Chief Electoral Officer has agreed, Speaker, has agreed to assist the City with moving forward to those two new electoral boundaries, including providing revision and updated information from the most recent election. 
Uh, if passed, Speaker, uh, our proposed legislation would align Toronto's municipal boundaries with those that are uh, already in existence with the federal government and with the members that we just had during the election. Speaker, Speaker, we are taking decisive Response. action so that on October 22nd, Torontonians can vote for a streamlined government, one that is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, the member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Can the Premier tell Ontarians where exactly in his plan for the people he said he would specifically cut Toronto City Council in half in the middle of our election? Premier. Mr. Speaker, when I was down at City Council, I put it to a vote. I spoke a hundred times about reducing the size and cost of government. Matter of fact, if you saw on Friday, if you saw on Friday, we had a diverse group of councillors, and you'll probably see them today come down to support, to support reducing the size and cost of government. We had over 12 councillors come out, said this is the right decision. 44 councillors know it's dysfunctional down there. Nothing is getting done ex except wasting taxpayers' money, getting in more debt. We're feeling pressure of over $550 million down at the city, and they aren't coming to us to get bailed out. I can guarantee you that. They're going to start taking care of their own house with a smaller government. Good governments in any corporation is seven to nine because you can't get anything done if you have 20 people around the table. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stop the clock. The members will please take their seats. Restart the clock. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Premier has no mandate to interfere entirely on his own in Toronto's election. Why does the Premier think that he knows better than the people of Toronto? Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, during the election, we committed to bringing accountability and trust back to government. We also, Speaker, Agreed to reduce the size and cost of government. Speaker, we believe that under this proposed legislation, the people. Member for Don Valley East. Member for Don Valley East must come to order. Minister. Speaker, we believe that on October 22nd, under this proposed legislation, the people of Toronto will have a streamlined council. Ready to work, ready to make those important and efficient and effective decisions on behalf of Bonson. their constituents to, to have the right priorities under an effective council. This is very important for us. We talked about reducing the size and cost of government. Thank you. Next question, the member for Eglinton Lawrence. My question is for the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Our government for the people is committed to reducing the size and cost of government. Can the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing tell us about the steps that the government is taking? All right. Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Thanks, uh, thanks, Speaker, and I want to thank the member for the question. During the campaign, we received a very strong message from Ontarians that they wanted us to respect taxpayers' dollars. And on June 7th, it was clear that they wanted a government that got things done. And, Speaker, that's exactly what we're going to do. Today, I will propose legislation that, if passed, would reduce the number of Toronto councillors to 25. Speaker, as you know, local government 
delivers critical services to their residents. It's in everyone's interest, Speaker, that they do so in an effective and efficient manner for their taxpayers. Torontonians, as I've said, can now vote under this proposed legislation for a streamlined Spons. council that, when elected, are ready to work on the priorities of their constituents. Restart the clock. Supplementary. Back to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Thank you very much, Minister, for the answer. This is great news for Toronto and for the people and the Council. Can the Minister tell the House how this legislation would not only benefit Toronto Council, but would also improve the lives of all Torontonians? Minister. Well, again, I want to thank the member. As I, as I said earlier, uh, the proposed legislation would reduce uh, the number of Toronto councillors to 25. This is a meaningful change that will dramatically improve the decision-making process at the City of Toronto. For too long, Speaker, that process has been discussions that have went around and around and around and not been able to make those important decisions. We believe that this, that this bill will allow the city to make those important decisions, here, here. whether they be on infrastructure, yep. whether they be on housing or transit, to have a streamlined council that can make decisions faster and, at the same time, Speaker, over the four years would save Toronto taxpayers $25 Whoa. million. Dollars. That's an important goal for this business. Decisions, but it will also provide a financial benefit to those constituents. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, the member for Toronto Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. When did the Premier tell the Minister his plan to interfere in Toronto's election during the middle of their campaign? When? Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Speaker. Through you to the member. It's very important for me to remind the member of the message that both our party and his party and the other parties received in the June 7th election. Make no mistake, Speaker, we received a very clear mandate, very clear mandate for accountability and trust and to put that back into government. We also made it very clear during the election, Speaker, and I want to remind the member that discussing reducing the size and cost of government was something that my Premier and members of my caucus made countless times during the election. We went through this campaign, and uh, the Premier and our members talked to tens of thousands of Ontarians. They talked about the interest and the information to be able to provide this uh, to the House today. As I said before, uh, my plan is to propose this Response. legislation. It will dramatically cut the size uh, of Toronto City Council, but it will more importantly— Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Again to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. The Premier didn't campaign on interfering in Toronto's election in the middle of the campaign. It didn't come up until Thursday night, three months after the municipal election began. It wasn't in his platform. He didn't mention it in a single debate. He didn't tell Ontarians. When, Minister, did the Premier tell you his plan? Minister. Thank the, uh, the member for the question. No one in Ontario, Speaker, believes that we need more politicians to make a decision. Any oversized council makes it almost impossible to make those decisions on behalf of their constituents. We believe the proposed legislation would streamline council and make better decisions. I don't know about the member, but I certainly believe that having 25 MPs covering a, an electoral district and 25 MPPs covering elect, an elect, the same electoral district is out of touch with having 25 city councillors deal with that same electoral district. I, I think it provides better government. I think it yeah. provides better decisions, faster decisions to be able to deal with the priorities of the citizens of Toronto. I ask you to join us in supporting this proposed legislation. Stop the clock. Members of 
Ah, isso é que eu sei. Restart the clock. The member for Scarborough Guildwood. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Premier. Your overnight decision to meddle in the Ontario municipal elections is concerning. Again and again, you drive chaos through this system. Given that the elections have already begun as of May 1st, with hundreds of candidates already registered, signs have been purchased, people have signed up. This creates chaos at a time when we need stability and strong leadership to focus on things like NAFTA. The Premier is sending a message to investors that he can't manage a stable government. He speaks out of both sides of his mouth. Consultations. Ask the member. Ask the member to. Take your seat. Ask the member to withdraw. I withdraw, Speaker. Speaker, why consultations for sexual education and not for municipal elections decisions? Will the Premier commit to consultations in this instance for the city Thank of Toronto? Thank you. Response? <laughs> Premier? Municipal Affairs. Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker. I want to thank the member for the question. Uh, as I said, our proposed legislation will change uh, for this election the number of councillors within the City of Toronto. We've made it uh, on Friday. We talked about uh, the changes that we're proposing that would allow the nomination period to be extended from Friday, uh, July 27th, the Friday that was passed, to September 14th. We've committed, as I said earlier today, to work with the clerks on those transitional issues for candidates. We've also uh, reached out to Ontario's chief electoral officer to try to help uh, the municipality deal with the most important uh, aspect of the newest uh, possible voters list. Uh, we're going to continue to work with the clerk's office and, our, and the City of Toronto as we manage uh, over the proposed piece of legislation. Response. Uh, it's, uh, again, but it goes back to the, uh, the underlying principle. We, we uh, campaign on respecting taxpayers' dollars. Supplementary, Member for Scarborough Guildwood. Mr. Speaker, to the Minister then. Like most people, I was shocked to learn from the Toronto Star overnight that this government is planning to cancel regional chair elections and interfering with local races in Toronto. As the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, a former mayor, in fact, we expect better. You stood in this House and voted in favour of the bill for an elected chair in York Region, saying, we all agree that this bill would increase the accountability and make the system more democratic and the people of York Region want change. Minister, why have you changed your tune? Shame. Response. Minister. Speaker, I want to again thank the member for the question. The Liberals imposed the bill on this House in 2016. There were many stakeholders who felt it needed to be hit, hitting a pause. The Premier and I on Friday talked about hitting a pause on those four regional governments. They'll go back to the way they, they operated in the 2014 election. There is remains unchanged for the other three regional governments. I think we were very clear that, uh, that we are going to move forward with those changes as well as the City of Toronto changes today in the proposed bill. I look forward to engaging our, our regional government partners uh, in a couple of weeks at the Association of Municipalities of Ontario conference. We're going to start the, the dialogue on an informal basis, and we'll probably have something more formal in the fall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, the member for Brampton Centre. Welcome the opportunity to finally elect a chair to the region of Peel. I apologize. Next question is the member for Brampton South. Yeah. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Our government for the people is committed to restoring accountability and trust and bringing efficiency back to government. Can the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing tell us what our government is doing to help regional government work more effectively and efficiently for their taxpayers? Well, thank you, Speaker, and I want to thank the member for Brampton South for that question. Uh, as I said earlier, it's my intention to uh, present legislation that, if passed, would put a pause on changes brought in 2016 without consultation to create a new uh, layer of politicians, elected regional chairs in York, Peel, Niagara, and Muskoka. Speaker, the last thing that families, businesses, and municipal leaders in these regions need is another layer of politicians. We're proposing to go back to the way it was before 2016. The other, the other regional government, Speaker, would continue to elect their representatives as normal, but Speaker, in York, Peel, Niagara, and Muskoka, we're going to take a pause. We intend to uh, reverse legislation imposed on municipalities in 2016. Response. This is another example, Speaker. It's another example of our government getting out of the way and allowing those councils to work in the best interest of their community. Mr. Speaker, back to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Thank you very much, Minister, and thank you for acting now to reverse legislation that was unfairly imposed on municipalities. Minister, what about the other regions? Can the minister tell the House how the government intends to make sure all regional governments in Ontario work more effectively and efficiently for the people? Minister. Thank you, Speaker. And again, I want to thank the, uh, the member for the question. Speaker, our government for the people is committed to finding the most effective and most efficient ways for municipalities to work for their taxpayers. Speaker, as the Premier has said, one thing every politician at every level in every region needs to understand and remember is that we all share the same boss. We all work for the people. We're going to take a long look at regional government, Speaker, uh, where things have worked and, and where they haven't worked so well. Speaker, I'm going to start this review informally uh, at our discussion at the upcoming Association of Municipalities of Ontario conference in, uh, in uh, the city of Ottawa. Uh, I, I really want to hear from municipal leaders at that conference in an informal setting how they feel things have worked and, in some Spons. cases, things they'd like to change. And then, after that review, we'll, uh, we'll have more discussions, perhaps in a more formal Next question, a member for Brampton South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my question is for the Premier. In Brampton, we welcomed the opportunity to finally elect a chair to the region of Peel. So we were shocked to learn that without any public input, this government has decided to drag Brampton backwards. And now, this government has taken away the democratic voice of 1.4 million residents in the region of Peel. Right. The people in my community deserve to elect a chair. Can the Premier explain why he is taking away our community's right to elect their government? Premier. For you, Mr. Speaker, I know the people in Brampton very well, extremely well. Matter of fact, I know the people in Brampton Centre very well, and I think I'm going to do a little door knocking there to find out. When I door knock, do you want more politicians? Do you want more layers of government? Because your MPP wants bigger government, more taxes. I can promise you not one single person in Brampton Centre wants more politicians, want higher taxes, they want lower taxes. That's what the people of Brampton Centre want. We could go up, and if I went up to them, and say, would you be happy to trade in a bunch of politicians for millions of dollars of services? They'd say, show them the door. And that's what we're going to do. Members will take your seats.
The House will come to order. The House will come to order. Restart the clock. Supplementary, member for Brampton Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Back to the Premier. During this government's short time in office, we have seen backroom deal after backroom deal leaving the people of Ontario worse off. Now the Premier has suddenly taken away the right of a community to elect their own regional chair. This type of unilateral meddling does nothing but move our communities backwards. So I ask you, which of your insider friends are you propping up to power by manipulating the election in the Peel region? Take your seats. Take your seats. The Premier. Through you, Mr. Speaker, back in 2016, I don't remember any consultation happening when the previous government rammed it down the throats of the region appeal to have duplication of government. I don't remember any consultation when the city wanted to increase politicians, three more politicians. I don't remember any consultation about raising taxes, increasing politicians, but I can tell you— Mr. the Premier take a seat. The official opposition has to come to order. I can't hear the Premier. Premier. And I just want to remind leader of the opposition, the NDP, you mentioned me running for mayor. I ended up getting 88,646,000 more votes than the NDP, all combined in the city of Toronto. So thank you. Still have 20 minutes. <laughs> Start the clock. Member for Perry Sound, Muskoka. My question is to the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. We've all heard the tragic news of Jerry Godwa of the, of the Cadhuan First Nation community in northern Alberta, who died while supporting the fire suppression efforts in Red Lake, Ontario. On behalf of the people of Ontario, I would like to thank him for his services and express my heartfelt condolences to his family. He will always be remembered as a hero. Can the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry provide this House with an update on how fire suppression efforts are progressing across Ontario? Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for the member for the question. And, and I also would like to once again express our condolences, the government's condolences on Mr. Godwa's family. I think it's very important that we recognize the bravery and courage that uh, Mr. Godwa displayed in the name of providing for his family and protecting those areas for which he was deployed. I'd like to also express my appreciation to all the staff and volunteers who continue to do their part. To this date, we received support from our provincial partners as well as from the United States and Mexico, and we anticipate more fire rangers coming from Mexico and more equipment from our provincial partners. And we're also exploring an option that would allow retired rangers to come back on the job on a temporary basis to provide added assistance and uh, expertise. Again, Mr. Speaker, our top priority is safety of the public, protection of property, and safety of our emergency responders. Thank you. Supplementary. And uh, back to the Minister, Speaker. I want to thank all the firefighters from Ontario, other provinces, the United States, and Mexico who are working so hard to fight the many fire fires around northern Ontario. In particular, I want to thank those that are fighting Perry Sound 33 in the north end of my riding. I was pleased to join the Minister and the Premier in visiting the brave men and women fighting Perry Sound 33 on Friday. Can the Minister share with this House and with the people of my riding what is being done to stop this and other fires? Minister, Thank you again for that question. And yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, on Friday, the Premier, the member from uh, Perry Sound, Muskoka, 
and myself visited uh, the uh, Brit Command Centre near Parry Sound uh, to visit those who are fighting the fires and to see the effects for ourselves. And we must say we are truly amazed at the dedication and, and professionalism of the Command Centre and those doing their part to keep Ontarians safe. Currently, the fire situation across northern and central Ontario is still active. This is because of warm temperatures, windy conditions, minimal precipitation, and frequent thunderstorms with plenty of lightning. We are actively monitoring the fire situation and fighting key fires from the air and on the ground. Our top priority, as I said earlier, is the safety of the public, protection of property, and the safety of emergency responders. We are fully prepared and ready to protect the Response. public and our natural resources, and I've instructed my department to explore all options as how we continue to assist and dedicate resources to these fires. Well Thank you. Next question, the member for St. Catharines. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Premier. Does the Premier believe, believe that consulting with the public is important to the political process? Yes or no? Premier. Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Thanks. I want to thank the member. You know, my Premier has consulted with tens of thousands of people during the election campaign. Crystal clear during that election that Ontarians embraced our message to respect taxpayers' dollars. As well, Speaker, we've talked countless times during the campaign about being, bringing accountability and trust back into this, uh, this government, back to uh, again move forward to our legislative agenda, where uh, I'll be proposing legislation that will reduce the number of uh, councillors in the City of Toronto, that will press a pause on uh, the regional government changes that the previous government imposed in 2016. We believe very strongly, Speaker, that the mandate we received and the message that we, we were given Spons. during that election was to respect taxpayers' dollars, to make the government work accountable and efficiently. That's what we're doing in the City of Toronto, and I look forward to discussing it. Thank you, supplementary. Mr. Speaker, this government just can't, keep, can't seem to keep their argument straight. First, they go on about the importance of, and I quote the Deputy Premier here, a proper end-to-end -end consultation that is completely inclusive and that hears from everyone. And then, days later, they turn around and force changes on the communities like Niagara with no word from the people. We have seen this government rail on and on and on about the importance of public consultation. But they only seem to care when it suits their far-right extremist friends. If public consultation is such an important part of this political process for the Conservatives, why, why did they, they, why, why did they think it was appropriate to skip it when removing democratic rights from the? Thank you. Thank you. Minister. Member, you know, no one but the New Democrats believe that having more politicians is the right thing to do. <laughs> over and over again, we'll hear from this side of the House talking about a bloated government, more government, more politicians. I don't believe that having more politicians is the right way to go. We heard clearly during the campaign to respect taxpayers' dollars, to, br to bring back accountability and transparency and trust in government. You know, we're moving forward to reduce the size of government, to make it more streamlined, to be able to make decisions faster for the priorities of their constituents. I'm not surprised that the Democrats are against having efficient government. Members will take your seat. The House will come to order. Next question, member for Hastings, Lennox, Nettington. Start the call. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Speaker, I certainly appreciate the calm in the House right now. My question is to the Minister of the Environment. Our government was elected on a clear, clear mandate to put people first and to make life affordable for families in Ontario. And that included a commitment to taxpayers to show respect for their hard-earned money. In her Value for Money review, the Auditor General looked at the previous government's cap and trade scheme. It was concluded the program would cost $8 billion and would, quote, not significantly lower emissions within the province, end of quote. In fact, the Auditor General went on to say that this program would achieve only 20 per cent of its desired results. Clearly, Mr. Speaker, that is not value for money. Nope. The taxpayers of Ontario deserve more. Will the Ministry of Environment please assure this House and address the real challenges we face with respect to taxpayers Good and question. Minister of the Environment, Conservation and Parks. Mr. Speaker, I thank the member from Hastings, Hastings Lennox and Angton for the question. Um, as we know and as we've discussed, the previous government's cap and trade carbon tax was an effective program. Uh, he quite rightly reminds us that the Auditor General confirmed through her approach to this that, that the government cap and trade would actually cost businesses and consumers $8 billion wow. and it would not only see a slight reduction in emissions. And, uh, and as was mentioned, Mr. Speaker, a, the thought that it would fall 80 per cent short of the targets that were set um, was surprising to Ontarians, and that is why we ran on a, uh, on a program that would eliminate that, and that is why we are saying that the era of carbon tax in Ontario was over. The NDP would continue that program. The NDP would, in fact, uh, build on that program. The NDP's talked about the highest carbon tax in the, world. in the world. Our government will stand up for taxpayers. Our government will eliminate the carbon tax. Restart the clock. Supplementary. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I certainly thank the minister for his answer that does respect taxpayers. Yeah. The conclusion reached by the Auditor General, of course, was the same conclusion reached by the people on June the 7th. Yeah, yeah. The Liberals' cap and trade carbon scheme is nothing more than a complete tax grab. For years, families have struggled with the increased costs associated with this tax, and I hear stories that most members do everywhere we go. I know that's why my constituents are excited to hear that our government is now moving quickly on our promise to eliminate the cap-and-trade scheme that truly punishes families. Mr. Speaker, we promised that relief would be on the way for the hard-working people of Ontario. Promises made. Promises made. To the Minister of the Environment, to the Minister of the Environment, I submit to my constituents the true relief is on the way. Minister. Mr. Speaker, um, as with the member, I heard the same thing from my constituents in Ajax. Uh, people are tired of being taxed for, for everything that they do. We are winding down this program to help working families, to help families in Ontario and make sure that they benefit from the program. Cheaper gas prices, lower energy bills, more money in their pockets. Speaker, eliminating the cap and trade carbon tax will save the average family $260 a year every year. In addition, in addition to saving families money, it will lower the burden for Ontario business. It's anticipated through the cancellation of the cap-and-trade carbon tax, Ontario will create an estimated 14,000 jobs. Wow. Wow. Our legislation is great news for the people of Ontario. As the member said, promises made, promises kept. Wow. Restart the clock. Next question, the member for Davenport. Thank you. Three, Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Premier. Why has this Conservative government singled out Toronto City Council specifically, not any other municipality, with this unilateral action to slash the number of Toronto City Councillors? Is it because he has a score to settle with Torontonians who rejected him as mayor? Failed mayor. Response, Premier. For you, Mr. Speaker, member of the opposition, we had an election. The people of Toronto, was, they were very clear. We ended up with more votes than all the opposition. We ended up with more votes than the NDP to fulfill our commitment of reducing the size and cost of government. We were very clear 
that we're going to have a smaller government. We're very clear about saving taxpayers' money, reducing their hydro rates, reducing taxes, getting infrastructure built, getting transit built, taking care of the backlog of housing. That's what our mandate was, and that was the mandate the people of Toronto and Ontario gave to our party to move forward, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Stop the clock. Restart the clock. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, this government is proposing to slash the number of Toronto City Councillors from 47 to just 25. Now, shame on you. This is being done despite the fact that the city spent two years consulting on this issue. Order. I'll give the member extra time. Thank you. This is being done despite the fact that the city spent two years consulting on this issue and concluded that 47 councillors would be the best in terms of representation and ensuring that every voter is treated equally. Now, Toronto will have the same number of councillors as Ottawa, a city with one third of Toronto's population. So I ask you again, why is this Conservative government undermining the foundations of our community in order to settle I, I, I apologize. I apologize to the member who had to interrupt your question, but ask the government side. She's 10 feet away from me and I can't hear her. I'm going to let, let the member repeat her question so I can hear her. So I ask you again, Mr. Speaker, why is this Conservative government undermining the foundations of our democracy in order to take revenge on old foes? Response, Through you, Mr. Speaker, member of the opposition, did you see the 12 councillors stand up, the fiscally conservative councillors, representing close to 2 million people in the city of Toronto? They know what their, what their constituents want. They want smaller government. Here, here. They want transit built for the first time ever in Toronto. That's why we're going to be uploading the subway system. That's why we're finally going to build subways for the people of Scarborough, Mitzi. Actually, subways are coming to Scarborough. Didn't she flip her up on that? Next question, member for Burlington. Speaker, my question is for the President of the Treasury Board. My constituents in Burlington are concerned about the state of Ontario's books, Mr. Speaker. Under the previous Liberal government, they've seen our province's debt climb to become the highest of any subnational jurisdiction in the world. They've also worried that we don't know yet the whole truth, Mr. Speaker. They watched as the Auditor General called into question the previous government's accounting practices and discovered that their promises to return to a balanced budget was hiding an even bigger structural deficit than we imagined. Mr. Speaker, can the minister explain how our governments for the people will begin to dig Ontario out of this mess? President of the Treasury Board. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the member from Burlington. And let your constituents know in Burlington that help is on the way. Yeah, yeah. We know that Ontario doesn't have a revenue problem, Mr. Speaker, but under the previous government, it certainly had a spending yeah, yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah. We, we have been clear since day one that we will put Ontario on a healthy financial footing, yeah. and we will ensure that the province can afford to strengthen and maintain the vital public services the province depends on. Yeah, yeah. That is why our government has launched an independent financial commission of inquiry to show us how the province got into this mess and a line-by-line -line audit which will begin to show us the way out. Here, here. Here, here. This audit will provide the government Spons. with a detailed analysis of current spending, benchmark this against other jurisdictions, and recommend areas that can be improved. Mr. Speaker, the government Thank you. Supplementary question. Speaker, back to the minister. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the minister for his answer and his diligence in ensuring Ontario, Ontarians can trust the government's books. I know the people of my riding and across Ontario are looking to the government to find efficiencies while continuing to deliver our vital services in an effective way. Can the minister please update the House on our government's efforts to restore the confidence of taxpayers that their money is being spent with prudence and care? President of the Treasury Board. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you again to the member uh, from Burlington for that important question. We promised, Mr. Speaker, that we would put an end to the party with the taxpayers' here, money. Here, here. We know that fiscal reviews like this one have the greatest potential to help target efforts to find solutions. Mr. Speaker, that is why I'm proud. Our government has wasted no time in launching a line-by-line -line yeah. audit. Yeah. This audit includes a clear commitment to transformational change while protecting frontline jobs and services. Absolutely. Mr. Speaker, we are not only restoring trust and accountability, we are ensuring Ontario is strongly positioned to deliver high-quality, sustainable public services now and in the future. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, the Response. government and our Premier will not stop until we have restored responsibility yep. and Ontario's finances to a healthy place once again. Hey. Stop the clock. Start the clock. Next question, the member for Brampton East. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. The Premier cannot just wake up one day and unilaterally decide to change the municipal electoral landscape and cancel elections. Money has already been invested and campaigns have been underway for months. Does the minister know how much this undemocratic decision will actually cost in court cha challenges that will inevitably come forward? Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Well, again, Speaker, uh, I want to thank the member for the question. Uh, Speaker, I think my, my premier was very clear. You know, we had an election. He spoke to many people in the, the city of Brampton about respecting taxpayers' dollars, and make, about making sure that government at all levels is more effective and more efficient. Our proposed legislation, other than the changes for the City of Toronto, will only deal with the four regional governments that were the part of this previous government's 2016 legislation. All we're doing, Speaker, all we're doing is pressing the pause button while we move forward with a discussion with our municipal partners about regions. I know that the opposition benches are going to howl because they're always going to stand up for bigger government. They're always going to stand up for more politicians. That's not the message Spons. that we heard from Ontarian Speaker. We heard very clearly to respect taxpayers' dollars and to reduce the size and cost of government. Thank you. Supplementary question. Mr. Speaker, the Premier is acting like a dictator. Changing the order, 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 order. The member must withdraw. John. Question. Rules midway through the campaign. We know at least one court challenge has already been filed. Again, can the minister tell us how much Ontarians will be on the hook fighting court challenges caused by this dictator-like plot? Order. Ask the member to withdraw. Response, Minister of Municipal Affairs. Uh, thank you, Speaker. It's very regrettable some of the words that are being used in this legislation today. Very regrettable. You know, our government to, for the people is committed to finding effective and efficient ways for government to deliver services. Again, Speaker, in terms of the regional governments, it's only the four that were dealt with in the government, the previous government's 2016 legislation. I've mentioned very, very clearly that we're going to start an informal discussion 
with our, our governments at the Association of Municipalities of Ontario conference in a couple of weeks in the city of Ottawa. We, we want to engage them, Speaker, to find out things that have worked in our regional government system and also things that I think we need to improve on. It's all, again, a part of us having an efficient and effective way Spots. to deliver public services and especially those municipal services that are the closest services to the people. We want to respect those municipalities. We want to engage them. Thank you. Next question, the member for Northumberland, Peterborough South. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I, I was out on Friday, and my question is for the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. I was out on Friday consulting with the good folks of Alnwick, Haldeman Township. And in fact, uh, Mr. Minister, I met with the mayor. And you know what was the first thing the mayor told me, Honourable Minister? Was that the first move they made to restore accountability and trust was to reduce the size of their municipality. As a result, as a result, Mr. Speaker, as a result, they've been better able to deliver municipal services to their to their constituents. So my question is for the minister: What is this government doing to ensure we better respect the hard-earned tax dollars of Ontarians? Thank you. Again, again, Speaker, I want to thank the, uh, the member for the question. There's no doubt, Speaker, that we on this side of the House believe in better local government. And during, that camp during our last campaign, we heard very clearly, very clearly to respect taxpayers' dollars. We also, uh, with the changes that are proposed in this legislation, we, we want to get to the point, Speaker, that on October 22nd, the people of Toronto can vote for a streamlined council. Just like the council that you talked about, uh, we, we, we'll vote for a streamlined council that will be ready to make quick decisions in the best interest of their taxpayers. It's the right decision to do. I again ask the members opposite, join us on making efficient and effective local government something that we Members will please take your seats. That concludes question period for today. Pursuant to Standing Order 38A, the member for Toronto Centre has given notice of her dissatisfaction with the answer to her question given by the Premier concerning Toronto's municipal election. This matter will therefore be debated Tuesday at 6 p.m. There being no deferred votes, this House is recessed until 1 p.m. this afternoon.